for the two of us to work with. One, uh, both of them suffered uh, from Asperger's disorder by a uh, diagnosis that was made at uh, local hospitals. Asperger's disorder is by definition in the DSM-4, the Bible for psychiatrists, is a qualitative impairment in social interaction as manifested by at least two of the following. Impairment in use of multiple nonverbal behavior, failure to develop peer relationship, lack of desire to share with others, lack of social or, or emotional reciprocity. Then there's a whole other category in which there are stereotyped and repetitive motor manifestations. Uh, there are disturbances in social functioning, but there's no general delay in language. And these uh, patients are known to be uh, uh, exceptionally intelligent. Now, how does intuitive co-therapy, as we call it, work in diagnosis? Well, Dominique, as a medical intuitive, uses her intuition and radiesthetic knowledge of alchemical processes. Don't ask me here. I'm asking Claude to tell you about all the things that I can't tell you because he comes on afterwards. <laughs> and he knows a lot of these things much better than I do. <laughs> Including the use of the pendulum to provide information on the emotional and spiritual state of the patient and the integrity and level of excitation of the bioenergy concentrations known as chakras. I, as a physician and healer, I utilize my ability to see the patient as a, as a holographic image. This is something that uh, I received training in and I've been doing it for over 15 years. And I can literally see inside on a physical and subtle matter levels of organization. Subtle matter may be a term you don't know and Claude will give an excellent description of it. <laughs> this information is then integrated with that provided by Dominique to permit the creation of a comprehensive plan of co-therapy. Uh, let me add at this point that some of these terms like subtle matters, while they may be new to many of you, have been in use and uh, worked with uh, for decades, if not centuries, by other medical healing people. Now, the healing part, we have diagnosis, now we have healing. Healing by myself is affected by first establishing resonance with the patient. And I do that by my intention. Then making connections on the subtle matter level of their organism. Invariably, the process involves detoxific detoxification and the balancing of imbalance in the subtle bodies, uh, which are organized templates of subtle matter. Uh, these things are visible to me as much as a table like this is visible to you. Often regeneration of tissue on the subtle body level is also necessary. These corrections are later spontaneously manifest on the physical level. Healing by Dominique involves her establishing a resonance with the patient, then interacting with them at their frequency of energetic pulsation or at a harmonic of this frequency. This creates a comfort zone with the patient, permitting them to open up spontaneously at the heart and soul level. This ability, plus Dominique's natural empathy and wisdom, make her superlative at helping people find and establish their life path. Now, before we continue, I want to show you some uh, uh, graphs of resonant bonding in co-operator experiments done at the Pear Laboratory by Bob John and Brenda Dunn. Uh, here you see unbonded, this is a graph of unbonded opposite sex pairs uh, as operators uh, with an REG as the target. And uh, many of these kinds of slides have been shown before. I simply want to point out at this moment that the final results are less than significant. Unbonded opposite sex pairs. What do we mean by bonded? We, the meaning, uh, bond, by bonding, we, we're speaking of a sense of resonance between the two people so that they feel that they know each other and they are in rhythm and in harmony with each other. When they are bonded, we get significant results. 
in attempts to order the information from the random event generator. Big difference. And one of their conclusions is that it appears that anomalous results can occur with similar frequency to those of the individual efforts. That's in the bonded couples. But in patterns that are not simply combinations of their separate signatures with corresponding composite efforts, by which they say that it isn't, the results are not a matter of adding one and one to yield two, but getting something like three or four or something which we don't know what, but it's quite different, and it, as we saw in the previous graph, it yields a far more powerful result. Now, the extraordinary effects of two or more individuals bonded in a finely tuned resonance has been documented in ancient Chinese literature, alchemical texts of the Middle Ages, and more recently in the writings of Roger Weir, who calls it shared presence, and the just illustrated experimental and the theoretical work of Robert John and Brenda Dunn. So this is not news. We're not the first people to use this. Now in therapy, the appropriate metaphor to describe the co-therapy process is that of two therapists as tuning forks pulsating at the same frequency. In this state, working either simultaneously or sequentially, with a resonantly tuned patient, we find that our intentions, generated both consciously and unconsciously, are significantly amplified. In our experience, this permits a rapid acceleration of the healing process. Because the process takes place on an intangible physical level, it can be affected independently of time and space. Through intention, we establish resonance with the patient, thus permitting healing information to be induced in the patient thence to be manifested on a tangible physical level. The two patients with Alzheimer's disorder are Gwen and Rose. Uh, Gwen, Gwen is an 18-year-old Caucasian girl with problems in learning math, problems in social interactions, and most prominently pacing, which she calls galloping, almost continuously. As a matter of fact, at home, she will hold the floor because of her pacing. When we say continuously, we mean that all day except for brief periods. Gwen does this to relieve a sense of inner urgency. She also feels, felt her left brain to be dead, as she put it. Gwen is obviously very intelligent and mature beyond her age. She possesses some unusual extrasensory capabilities. Rose is a six-year-old Caucasian girl with similar school and social problems except that she wrings her hands for up to 20 minutes at a time, at least once per hour, something like this. It's all convoluted, she shows it to us. She goes into the state of what she calls her states of tension. Now, when I work with patients and I see uh, this hologram and I can see into them, the things that I'm looking for are not only the physical state of the patient, which we have here, represented here in the schematic, but also what has been known for centuries as the etheric body. That is, uh, it would correspond to what Sheldrake calls the morphogenetic body. And also an astral body, uh, which is uh, uh, an additional subtle uh, energy body. And these surround the patient and go through and through them. And in the girls, what I found in both girls, that there was a, a, a severe distortion in the etheric and the distribution of the matter, subtle matters in their brains. Uh, the, in both of them, you can see the etheric bodies of a relatively the same size, but the astral bodies in the right hemisphere were shrunken. I did, when I uh, started this, I knew, they had no idea what to expect. But this is what I found. And on the basis of experience, I know that I can uh, readily help people by balancing these out. So I did that. Uh, using intention, I was able to increase the astral body so it matched uh, what's compatible with the etheric body and, uh, and balanced out the brain. 
And here are the results. At the end of one day with Gwen, there was a 90% decrease in her galloping. At the end of two weeks, near 100% decrease in galloping. At four weeks, a sustained decrease in galloping and an improvement in learning math. This was working two to three times uh, a week while Dominique works in her coaching mode with them. Rose immediately felt relaxed uh, following the treatment of about 10 minutes. She initiated spontaneously engagement with Don Dominique, which is extremely unusual according to the mother. At the end of one week, there was a significant decrease in tensing, sustained relaxation, and engagement with others. Conclusion. The usually intransigent symptoms of Asperger's disorder can be anomalously ameliorated by intuitive co-therapy. Co-therapists operating in resonance can exert a healing effect well beyond that expected by a simple addition of their abilities, indicating the presence of an unknown element into the healing equation. Come up here, please, for questions. As people are coming up, just a quick question. Might this be additive? The effect? Yeah. I don't okay. think so. Okay. Hi. Thank you very much for that. Um, this taps into a lot of ideas I've been working with. And I'm wondering about the resonance phenomenon. They're asking you to speak up. <clears throat> Sorry. I'm wondering about the resonance phenomenon. Um, I'm conceptualizing that in very rudimentary terms as a pair of oscillating dipoles. And I'm wondering if, in my way of thinking, the dipoles would be the etheric body, or the astral body, or the physical body, or all of the above. Let's do some experiments and find out. I don't know. You have no immediate idea about that? No, I don't. Let's keep the question short, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Rich, uh, I have a somewhat personal question. I've got a five-year-old grandson with mild Asperger's. Uh, he shows uh, or indications of uh, becoming a, a math, or is a math pro prodigy. Super mem memory for, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, folks. Uh, a, a super memory for numbers. Uh, but I've noticed one thing physically about him. If I remember correctly, the, uh, the right side of his skull is slightly larger than the left. And I wonder if you've ever heard of that. It's not really noticeable unless he gets a brush haircut. But no, I haven't, but it doesn't surprise me. Okay. Yes, thank you. I was intrigued by your concept of the uh, holographic body. The only other time I've heard that recently is the books written by Adam, the well-known healer from Toronto, where he actually visualizes a holographic projection behind the individual to, that he's to be healing. And he also envisions interacting with that hologram to change the situation. So in your work, do you actually in, in, intend something to change, or do you just give the suggestion to the individual having the ailment? No, there's a clear intention. And uh, it happens, I believe, because being resonantly connected with the patient, that anything, any thought that I have regarding the patient uh, is induced, that information is induced into the patient through a state of resonance. Through the patient? Yeah. Thank you, Dick and Dominique. Um, I know that sometimes you speak of um, remote application of certain kinds of therapies. Do you think that's possible in this case? And if so, I have a patient for you. I do, I do it all the time. I treat people here, the East Coast, China, Europe, always. Please distinguish for me and for others who don't know the difference. What is the difference between the etheric and the astral bodies? Uh, well, the etheric body, uh, in my experience and what I've been taught, uh, functions as a template, like a blueprint, for every single cell and all the way down to the DNA level. It's an exact replica. I think that this is uh, what the morphogenetic field is. The astral body is a, more of a repository of emotions. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, for those weak ones of us who are stuck in the current paradigm, 
Uh, how do Shall you I cry <laughs> now? <laughs> <laughs> how do you? How am I to connect what you're talking about with conventional medicine? Let me say, I'm not sure it's worth trying. Uh, of course, I operate in both fields, and I've been trying to do this for my entire professional life. Uh, there is a whole, this is a whole other level of thinking and functioning. And until physicians get used to that and begin to operate in it so that it's a functional part of how they work and think, they won't have a chance of relating it to what they ordinarily know. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Dick and Dominic. Thank you. Take your water? Is that your water there? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me uh, okay. get your slides. Okay. Is that on? Okay. Stop.